Hello folks, glad that you're viewing again today and I'm delighted to be able to speak to you. I do regard it as a privilege that Gareth invited me to speak to you just for these few minutes today. I'm going to base my remarks on one fragment from the Bible and it's found in Acts chapter 16 and I'll just read it to you. There was a man of Macedonia who was saying this to Paul, come over into Macedonia and help us. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Now it's that concept of help that I want to speak about today. Maybe some of you are like me and when you were at the school you had to read some of the very famous novels. They would have called them classics and some of these novels were written by a man called Charles Dickens. Now Charles Dickens had an opinion about various things but one thing he expressed was this. He really believed that the, the greatest and the best short story in English literature is the story of the prodigal son, a parable that was told by the Lord Jesus. Maybe you're familiar with it. I won't go into the details, but just to get to you the lesson from that parable, the Lord was teaching that no matter how wayward a person has been, no matter how rebellious, if they come to Christ, then they will find that God is willing to pardon and forgive them. That's the lesson from the story of the prodigal son. But at any rate, Charles Dickens wrote some other novels. I suppose that maybe the most famous of them was a story called A Christmas Carol. And it's probably the most famous because it seems to get revived every Christmas time and people think about it. Maybe you remember that the villain at the start of the story was a man called Scrooge. And even today we use that word to describe anyone who is mean and tight-fisted and nasty and we say he's a real Scrooge. But do you remember Scrooge's first name? His first name was Ebenezer and in actual fact Ebenezer is a place name in the Bible. It was a place where a man called Samuel raised a monument because God had helped him and his people at that time and this is what he says, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Now my dear friends we all need help from God. It's so important to receive help from God. I know that we're living in very, very strange and difficult circumstances just at this moment in time and we all need help to adapt to all of that. Some of you have been affected by the virus. Maybe it has created bereavement in your family and your heart is still sad and we express our sympathy. It could be that you've been affected personally. It could be that your employment has been impacted as a consequence of the virus and we all need help in so many respects. But the point I want to get to you today is this. When this man said to Paul, come to Macedonia and help us, he wasn't thinking of the need of help in a physical sense or a material sense. In actual fact, the city of Philippi that was located in Macedonia, it would have been a fairly well-to-do place. It had strong trading ties with Rome and all the rest of it. So the help that was needed is what we call spiritual help. And we all need spiritual help. And as Paul came to that city, he preached to some women folks and some of them became Christians. But then there were folks in the city who didn't care for Paul and his message and they dragged him to the jail in Philippi and he was shut up in the dungeon there at Philippi in the jail. Well now, the man who was the jailer, he said this to Paul at one stage in the story, what must I do to be saved? He was a man from Macedonia. And now he was appealing for help. He wanted help to understand how he could be right with God, how his sins could be forgiven, how his soul could be saved. And so he posed the question, what must I do to be saved? Now, it could be that at some points in your life, you've been asking that question too. You know that there's an afterward to life. You know that you've got to prepare to meet God. You know that being religious is insufficient to make you right with God. You know that all your good works will never outweigh the sins of your life. Not one of us, my friends, could do a single thing to merit the salvation of our souls and a place in heaven and the forgiveness of us. And not one of us. And so this is a very pertinent question. What must I do to be saved? He realised that getting saved was a must. It was absolutely vital. It wasn't some issue he could shelf till another time. No, it, it was absolutely critical. What must I do to be saved? And the salvation of your soul 
ought to be your top priority in life. I know there are many issues that may affect you one way or another, but I'm appealing to you today. See the salvation of your soul as your number one priority. And so here was the answer that the man received. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. So Paul directed the man to the Lord Jesus. He was helping him to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ alone can save. And viewer, the Lord Jesus has done two things whereby he's able to save you. He died on the cross for your sins. Now let that touch you today. I know that God offers pardon and salvation freely, but it cost his son his life. He had to experience what the Bible calls the death of the cross with all its shame and its pain and its heartbreak and all the judgment of God that our sins deserve being poured out on him. So he died for our sins, but then he rose from the dead and the Bible says it's because he ever lives, he's able to save. So the message is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You'll notice it says believe. That means to depend on him, to trust in him. It means you abandon any thought that you can save yourself and contritely and repentantly you just come to Christ and acknowledge, well, if you died for sinners, you died for me and I'm willing to depend on that for the salvation of my soul. My friends, this is the only help that we can bring to you today. We can help you to understand God's plan of salvation. The question is, what must I do to be saved? The answer comes back, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Have you ever done it? Has there ever been that crisis point in your life when you realise, I need Christ, I'm willing to turn to him, I'll believe in him. And then, of course, you'll get help to live as a Christian. Paul said that later in his life. He said, having obtained help from God, I continue unto this day. But just a word of warning, this is not a matter that you can put on the back burner. It's something that demands urgent attention because the Bible says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. We never like to be alarmist in any way when preaching the gospel, but we do feel we've got to be realistic and none of us know when we're going to arrive at the end of life's road. And in light of that, I'm appealing to you today to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and to welcome him into your life. It's just between you and him. Self-isolation is good as far as that's concerned. You just get into a corner somewhere, into your own room or whatever. And between you and him, you can settle this matter of your soul's salvation. Peter in the Bible, he put it this way. Lord, save me. You could appeal to the Lord Jesus for salvation right now and experience that joy of salvation in your soul. So thank you again for viewing today and you would know that Bibles are available and all kinds of literature, literature is available and just make application there on the Facebook page to Gareth and he'll organise that for you.